call to Thursday, April 12th. Finance meeting in the autumn. Ms. Fontenot, could you please lead us in prayer following the pledge? Be glad to. Father, we do come before you tonight. We give you thanks for this great parish and all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We ask for your wisdom tonight and, and any creative ideas you can give us to move this parish financially. We also ask you for the provisions it takes to move this parish financially into the future. As always, we remember our soldiers who are abroad. We ask for their safe return. We ask for uh, the war to end quickly. We ask you to remember each and every volunteer, each and every EMS, fireman, and policeman that provide us with the safety that keeps us comfortable and keeps us in the land of the living and in the, the great state of Louisiana and the United States of America. And for these things, we're grateful and we give you thanks and praise. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Zahn, please let the record reflect that Mr. Valentine is out. He's at work. Mr. Lambert is out of town, uh, and also Mr. Thompson is out. Got that email I sent you. Uh, chair's additions. I do have a couple. Uh, Mr. Bob Turner called me with an emergency. They missed it on the transportation committee. It is a change order, I believe, on Betty Street. So I ask. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Motion by Mr. Ty Lambert, second by Mr. Savoy. Any discussion? Any objections? So moved. We'll take that up. I guess. Uh, oh, excuse me. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's right. The agenda was out. So. Okay. And the second. Uh, Chair's additions, Mr. Savoy asked that the last council meeting that Country Ridge be placed on the finance agenda. Uh, we missed it, so if y'all would like to take that up, we we'll entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Uh, motion by Mr. Hillensbeck, second by Mr. Ty Lambert. Any discussion? Any objection? So moved. We'll take that up under, I guess, uh, 12A. And I also ask that we uh, move 9C to 4A. Uh, that's still with Mr. Laverne Bourgeois. He has a, another engagement. So we'll, we'll move that and so he can make his other engagement. Uh, number four, public comment period. Anyone wishing to speak, please sign a speaker call with the secretary and we'll allow you to speak on that particular agenda item. Uh, Mr. Bourgeois will take up 9C now. That is in a government agreement between the parish and town of Sorrento to enforce the Louisiana Uniform Construction Code with town's corporate limits. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Committee members, I appreciate the opportunity tonight to uh, present a consideration uh, that the mayor of Sorrento, Mayor Melanso, has requested to the parish of Ascension to take over their inspection and permitting processes in regards to the recently approved State Legislative Act 12, which is the Louisiana State Uniform Construction Code. It's mandated by the state to begin this for all municipalities and entities of government of the state. And therefore, tonight, there was there has been prepared a an ordinance by the two attorneys, Ricky Babbitt and Mr. Greg Lambert of Sorrento, uh, to uh, assist in making this intergovernmental agreement between the two uh, government entities. And therefore, tonight I, I present this to you, and I'm here tonight to act to answer any questions that there are. One note that I might bring forward quickly would be a that the covert inspections and the covert permits would would not be part of the agreement. Therefore, the town of Sorrento will have to take care of their own covert 
other than what the uh, heat ascension uh, gravity drainage board would be doing in the major drainage fields. Uh, Mr. Shea Snyder, discussion. Yeah, do, do we need a motion? Yes, we do. To send uh, it before the council. Uh, yes, sir. I move that we send this before the council. Motion by Mr. Shea Snyder, second. second by Mr. Ty Lambert. Any further discussion? discussion? Mr. Shea Snyder. Yes, I, I would hope that if, uh, if it's passed, that, uh, Vern, you can make yourself available to the uh, town council uh, so that any questions can be Definitely. answered. Definitely. What you understand, all the zoning issues and those types of issues that are, are actually uh, in inner uh, parts of the city government will be included prior to a applicant coming to the parish to uh, ask for a permit for a building permit. Oh, such as that zoning of that kind of nature. <laughs> and I will be available to at, to go there and address any of the uh, town, all the town council's uh, questions. Any further discussion, questions? Having none? Any objections? Good. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Boudreaux. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for having me to uh, go first. Next, we have Lowe's presentation, request for assistance. It doesn't have anyone listed. I don't know who's handling that. Please state your name. And Hi. Yes, my name is Jennings Gray. I'm with ROI Consultants, uh, Consultants for Lowe's Home Centers. I'm going to have some handouts like that pass up. for the format of the presentation. Uh, we had a bound full color presentations uh, uh, ready for you, you folks tonight, but uh, unfortunately my vehicle was uh, vandalized and my uh, laptop and briefcase, everything was stolen out of my vehicle, so I had to kind of recreate this at the Hotel Business Center tonight, so I apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> Kind of start off a little bit about uh, what you have in front of you is a PowerPoint presentation, uh, and I apologize again for the format. Uh, kind of briefly describes Lowe's a little bit in detail in general uh, of the overall corporate philosophy of Lowe's. Uh, the vision of Lowe's is obviously to be our customer's first choice for home improvement to each and every market we serve, and to meet uh, their in each customer's individual needs. The financials for Lowe's, obviously, many of you already know this corporate wide is uh, uh, 43.2 billion sales in fiscal year 2005. They are ranked number 42 in the Fortune 50 companies. As you can see, there Lowe's certainly touts they have certain store advantages over their competitors. Uh, you can read that at your leisure. Uh, right now, we currently have more than uh, 1,300 stores in 49 states. And approximately 200,000 employees, and approximately 75% of those are full time with benefits. We're actively engaged in our community and we stand behind and support our environment. Um, for the lows of Ascension Parish, uh, we're looking at uh, approximately $15 million investment, $27 million in annual sales, 80 full time and 15 part time jobs, with estimated $2 million <laughs> payroll. Uh, the next uh, couple of s slides there, sheets, there's a breakdown of the full-time employment, the average wage, number of positions, and the uh, uh, detail of the benefits offered for these full-time positions. 
and um, there's also a breakdown of part-time positions available too and the benefits as well. Uh, one good thing about Lowe's, they do offer secondary jobs in the market. They have installed sales, craftsmen in the area, they, they employ landscaping services, local vendor representatives, and there's different uh, maintenance personnel that handle the store and the property. The next set of slides gets into the uh, actual uh, revenues generated by the, by the uh, project. Uh, obviously, real property tax, ad valorem taxes, very low. Uh, a 10-year total of $26,826. And this is just for the parish uh, sales, uh, uh, tax value. The next slide actually gets into the sales tax revenues for the project based on the uh, $27 million annual sales. And that's based on just the one cent general fund uh, sales tax rate, uh, assuming a 3% annual appreciation on that. Um, as you can see, a uh, 10 year total on that's over $3 million in sales tax revenues. The next slide will show a uh, grid that shows the real and per, uh, real and sales tax revenues over a 10-year period. Again, uh, $3,122,073. Uh, Obviously, the economic impact summary, increased property tax revenues, sales tax revenues, quality jobs, annual payroll, and of course, Lowe's is a proven corporate citizen. <coughs> More specific to the site in Gonzales, uh, or in the Ascension Parish, outside of Gonzales city limits, uh, we have um, Matt Newchurch with us tonight with um, Duplantis Engineering Group, and I'd like to have Matt come up here and kind of go through these public infrastructures that we've actually uh, in, improved on the site, invested, and um, Matt can give you more detail on that. It'll probably help folks if you have that site plan that Jennings handed out earlier, kind of to look and make some comparisons to. Um, I guess the first bullet point here, talking about the, the new access road, as you can see, there's going to be a new access road constructed between uh, Airline Highway and Highway 44 to serve as basically a um, uh, shopping center access, so to speak. To the north is going to be the, the Lowe's anchored site, about 15 acres. To the west of it, there's going to be um, a residual development to be determined, and then on the south side of the road is going to be um, anywhere upwards of four different individual users, um, again, the, the users of which are, are not yet known at this time, however, you know, you can just about imagine what's going to follow in, you know, the lows, the, um, you know, the standard commercial and restaurant and those kind of folks. So the first bullet point, that that's where that comes from. If it's a three lane, what we call the sewer side center lane, basically so uh, people can come in and turn left safely and access both areas of the site, north and south. The uh, the Highway 44 improvements, as you all are well aware, um, Highway 44 is a is a four lane <coughs> divided two north two southbound lanes. Um, when the traffic study came back and it was uh, the design was being reviewed by your parish engineer, there was some concern about the traffic movements in and out of the low site on Highway 44. So what Lowe's had agreed to do was provide some improvements there um, to help facilitate that access. Specifically, it's essentially going to widen Highway 44 in the area of the site along the frontage uh, 25 to 30 feet to add another lane in there. So basically, the two northbound lanes and the two southbound lanes will continue unobstructed, but there will be a center lane added in there to provide safe access a left turn movement into the site. Uh, on the other side, on the west side, on Airline Highway, um, Airline was a, a little better shape as far as using it for this site. Um, all we were really going to need to do is provide a left-hand turn lane at that median break that's out in front of the, the Bayou Bar right now. So we're going to improve that median a little bit in that area. Um, the next page, top bullet. Um, obviously, a big ticket item are the two traffic signals associated with the access road. Um, a signal to be provided on the airline side and on the Highway 44 side. So basically, that that hopefully the, the, one of the one of the hopes in the traffic study was that it'll help alleviate some of that congestion at 44 and 61 at that interchange. 
further to the south. So folks that want to come southbound on 44 and then go out on 61, be able to make that movement through this Lowe's Avenue, won't have to go down to the, to the interchange and congest it down there. So. Um, the, the two the two things that I guess that that Lowe's obviously could not do without were the were obviously water service and sewer service, uh, neither of which at the time we started this project were provided in Ascension Parish. Uh, so in order to again facilitate the the construction and operation of the store, uh, we began talks with Ascension Water Company um, to try to get a water extension down there. We understand they had some plans further up the road. They really weren't necessarily in a hurry to get this far south um, until we until we asked them to, and subsequently Lowe's paid them to do that. I'm sure you've all seen the work that's going on right now. They're putting that big 16-inch line coming down uh, coming down the airline highway. And then lastly is the sanitary sewer service. Um, it's our understanding that there was sewer service right across or right on the south side of Bayou Narcisse, uh, <coughs> operated by the city of Gonzales. One of the things that that um, staff had requested was that we try to do what we can to service this thing unto itself without having to go to City Gonzales for um, sanitary sewer help. Um, so that said, we design and currently are planning to construct an on-site treatment plant and lift station to serve not only the Lowe's but the residual of the development. I want to say the Lowe's is about 15 acres of the, all the rest of pieces are probably um, 30 in total. So it's 15 Lowe's and then 15 other commercial. Um, all that being said, you add all that up, it came up to around 1.3 million bucks with a contingency of 15 percent, giving you a grand total there. The hurricane adjustment um, at 35 percent it has probably settled down some. It's probably 28 to 30 now, but uh, I'm, if any of you in the construction industry, I'm sure you're still aware that it's, it's, it's still very, very high. Um, so with that, I guess that's that's my technical portion. I'll let Jennings can fin finish the uh, presentation. If you have any questions technical-wise, I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the presentation. Mr. Mark? Jim? Mr. Lambert, you have a question yeah. now? Yeah. Yes, sir. While we own it, uh, the, the study on the lights, you know, we have two lights right close to them. I know you're going to have a boulevard to get from airline to 44, but you're going to have a light and just a little section further, you're going to have another light. So you're adding two lights right close to each other. You don't see a problem with that? The, I'm not sure about it. The, the two lights. 44, you have a light right south of your project. Right. And then you plan on putting. Eckerd's kind of that little right. half shortcut thing. Bayou Narcisse. And, yeah, Bayou Narcisse. A little further down, you plan on putting lights on 44, right? Right. At the so that, we're not talking that far down is what I'm saying. It's a little short distance. They're actually, but they're actually, I mean, they're, they're, the design is such that it was that we believe that they're far enough apart, but they're also going to be interconnected with the new fiber optic system to where they're going to function together. Okay. The system times are going to be such that they're going to operate in sync with one another. They're not going to be. Y'all looked at that another. close as yes, well. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, Mr. Jen. Okay. Um, down, down, I guess, down to the, to the middle of the issue, our, our request, uh, whenever we first visited uh, the Ascension Parish and looking for a site here, uh, obviously we considered the uh, city of Gonzales also as an uh, Ascension Parish site. Um, as, as Matt said, you know, one of the, uh, the difficulties was the lack of water and sewer. <laughs> uh, it was discussed um, in an informal setting that uh, we we'll make some concessions on the water and sewer uh, for the site. Um, as we move forward on the project, uh, we we felt that would be the case, and so I guess that's why we're here today is uh, asking for that uh, uh, to to be made into a formal uh, agreement. Uh, what we're asking for is, is three requests: reimbursement of the one hundred eighty thousand three hundred twenty-three dollars and thirty-nine cents roughly in, in public water service expenses and reimbursement of the 208,000 in sanitary sewer service expenses. Uh, number three, approval of the Lowe's local sales tax rebate via the enterprise program. Basically what that is is a the one cent rebate of the sales taxes paid on construction material items. Uh, I know Tommy Kurtz is very familiar with this program and uh, it actually takes uh, a formal approval by the finance committee and the, and the city council or the parish council to uh, actually make that happen. One of the vehicles for the reimbursement that we've had in other uh, communities in Louisiana 
uh, is a uh, in cooperative endeavor agreement. I know Ascension Paris has entered in some of those, uh, are familiar with those uh, sales tax sharing agreements, basically where the parish and Lowe's would share 50 percent of the actual sales tax revenue generated by the project up to a maximum amount of the actual final cost. Uh, based on a 50 percent share of the annual one cent general fund revenue estimate of $270,000 in the first year, the anticipated cost of uh, over $388,000 would be reimbursed in less than three years. The next uh, diagram demonstrates that uh, the general fund revenues uh, year one, two, and three uh, and actually goes out to year five. The 50 percent share of those revenues and then the cumulative total. As you can see in year three, it's over $400,000. So uh, in less than three years, the 388000 would be reimbursed. And the uh, last slide there is the request for the, to be included in the Enterprise Zone Program. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. I also have some supporting documentation if, if that's needed as well. What, what is the uh, anticipated uh, one cent enterprise zone rebate? Uh, typically, in these in these stores this size, it usually equals out to about one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. One hundred fifty to two hundred thousand. Yes, sir. Okay. Is there anything different in here from when you met with Councilman Valentine and I several weeks ago? No, no, everything's the same. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Salwell. Uh, I'd like to, since the past president had the opportunity to meet with these guys early on, uh, what what are your ideas, Mr. President? Well, we talked, and then Councilman Valentine's understanding Jerry was going to give the council and see how the council felt about this. Uh, obviously, since the parish does not have the infrastructure to, to attract business to the unincorporated areas, sewer and water, uh, Lowe's did make a very good faith effort to locate in the parish and incorporate areas so we could receive those sales tax revenue when it could have went into, inside the city somewhere, and so we're appreciative of that. Um, one of the things that Councilman Valentine talked about, and did he get with any of you guys? Okay. The, uh, the tax increment finance districts, when they were originally set up many years ago, one of the primary purposes of that was to help unincorporated areas or areas that didn't have infrastructure in an economic development center, uh, situation to be able to help pay for that infrastructure to share that tax while you put that infrastructure in place. Normally an incorporated municipality will have those services and in most of our parishes throughout the state we do not. And so through those tax instrument finance, this is similar, just a, uh, a sharing arrangement which is what tax increment financing is. Now, a little bit different situation here, that t sales tax has been generated on this piece of property through the current owner or the previous owner of the property. Whereas many times in tax increment financing, there was no tax being generated, usually it's a vacant piece of property. In this case, there was some property tax and sales tax been being generated by the previous business is moving, staying in the parish, the unincorporated area moving, I guess, north up Highway 61, so they'll be relocating their business there. And so I have no problem if the council feels okay about trying to share some of this. It's kind of like annexation with the cities. You get into the same issues of infrastructure and taxes. Uh, obviously, if the parish had sewer and the parish had water, we'd make a fee. You know, we'd have it there, loads would connect, we'd charge a connection fee, and we'd charge monthly fees for those services. This is a little different. So this is something we need to sit down and address because we're going to have more and more of this coming up. We have the same thing happening now on Highway 30 in the unincorporated area just outside the city limits with hotel motels and other big box retailers who are looking at sites in that area. And so I suggest, uh, Mr. Chairman and the rest of the council, you get together, a few of us sit down with our new finance, uh, new uh, public works director. Uh, acting planning director so we can talk about this with somebody and see what we want to do until we have sewer and 
things in place ourselves. I did talk to Mr. Owens, Ascension Water, trying to get the cost down as much as we could after we met with Mr. Gray, Mr. New Church, Councilman Valentine and I, and they're basically charging their regular construction cost to extend that water line from about where the fire district number one headquarters was is where it stopped to this site. In addition now, I don't think you ever got us, Jennings, you were supposed to get us something, as I recall, and this has been many months ago, a document showing where you guys have made a commitment right. to pay the ongoing sewer right. costs, if understood it correctly, on the outforsals that will not be used by Lowe's. Right. I have that. Uh, that you could get that to uh, Secretary Patterson so we could give that to everybody. Sure. Yeah, those please. documents. I don't think Councilman Valentine or I either one saw those documents. Yeah. Past yes, thank you. Mr. Hillen's back. Oh, oh yes. well, excuse me. Mr. Salvo, are you finished? No, sir. Okay. I apologize. No problem. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, appreciate the opportunity for Lowe's to come in and look at Ascension Parish and decide to move into Ascension Parish. Unfortunately, our infrastructure is behind. You did take the risk of building where you're at outside the municipality. Um, I think it's incumbent upon the council and the parish to show good faith to the business world that we are willing to be fair to come in and locate inside the Central Parish. So I see, I see a compromise uh, to work with you to uh, meet your your request to some degree or a large degree of your request. Thank but you. thank you for deciding to move into Ascension Parish. That's all I got, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hill in the back. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, too, uh, glad to see Lowe's uh, move into the parish. In fact, I have a nephew that's a store manager uh, oh, with your organization out of state. And uh, I know you're, you're a great retail company, and uh, we're glad you're locating in Ascension Parish. Uh, I would have liked to have seen some of this up front, you know, before you started your construction program, and, I, and I'm being given this tonight, um, understanding that Mr. Valentine has sat down and y'all had some discussions, but we, we're given the information tonight, and I'd kind of like to suggest, Mr. Chairman, maybe, maybe we take this under advisement and maybe you appoint a committee and let's look at this. Uh, sit down with uh, our chief financial officer, Gwen LeBlanc, and take a look at this. I want to be fair about it, too. Sure. And But I'd, I'd sure like to have uh, her go through and look at it and verify the numbers, let let a subcommittee maybe look at it, and i make that uh, motion, Mr. Byron. Okay. Motion by Mr. Hillsbeck. Create a second, I mean a subcommittee. Second by Mr. McConnell. Any discussion on that particular? Okay, Mr. Lamb. No. Well, we actually have Mr. Shakes not in next. And then you, um, Mr. Shake Nine. Well, I, I just wanted to echo uh, Councilman yeah, Savoy and, and uh, Mr. Hillen's back. You know, we want to welcome you here. Glad you, uh, glad you, uh, interested in coming to Ascension Parish. Um, and as with that, I, I wish we had something in place where this would, you know, fall into place. And I, and and I want you to know that we are trying to, to to do this uh, fairly. Uh, however, also. You know, you have mixed emotions about all these things. You know, we have a uh, a business that is relocating just north of here, and a uh, very substantial business. And I, I'm not sure, uh, Mr. President, I don't think we have done anything to uh, help them with their sewer or their water. Um, we have uh, three or four uh, building companies that have expanded tremendously in Ascension Parish and has been here and been supporting the, the youth and the, and the businesses of Ascension Parish and hiring Ascension Parish people and th they put all the infrastructure in and I think uh, 84 Lumber Company has come in and, uh, and, and they've done that and I, I'm not saying that as something to shoot you down at all in no, in no way shape or form but I, I want you to understand that we're in a position where we have people that are coming in that give jobs and that uh, th that support the community that has been footing the bill uh, and 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 they're uh, 
doing a very good job in a sense. Well, we, um, and I don't mean to interrupt, I just wanted to respond to that. We, um, obviously Lowe's is, is not looking to get all their public infrastructure reimbursed. I mean, we've actually spent, as Matt demonstrated, you know, nearly $3 million in, in public infrastructure. And uh, the basic reason why we're here tonight is, you know, during our initial discussions with, with Martha Collins, um, when we first approached the, the parish, was that it, you know it was understood at that point that the parish would help with the cost of providing water and sewer to the site if we were to locate outside the city limits. Well, and, and that's and that's, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Here. Obviously, we we're here, and and, and we just um, uh, would like to. Uh, to kind of move forward on this, we've been uh, we've been talking to Ronnie, I guess almost over a year now, uh, on this project, and uh, and we just have got to this point. Um, the uh, with with the tax increment financing, you know, all of these almost nearly you know over two million dollars worth of public infrastructure will be eligible TIF expenses. Um, as you know, with a TIF, you know, you, you the bond financing, and it's payable, repaid back through the the revenues of the project. Here in Lowe's, obviously, has upfronted the money, you know, for all the public infrastructure, and all we're asking back is is this the, the three hundred eighty-eight thousand for well, the and, water and sewer. But what I was getting at is that uh, because of all the other things that are going on, uh, and and added to the fact that we do want you here, is that since we don't have uh, an automatic plan in place. Sure. I, I just wanted to echo uh, what Ms. Hillen was saying. You know, we need to negotiate and we need to sit down and, and, and come to some sort of agreement acknowledging that we have people in, here in the past that have footed the bill and we have sure. you guys that we want to come in and we know it's an economic uh, uh, input here that is, that is tremendous sure. and, and we want you here. So it's going to be something that, that we're going to try to do as fairly as possible. Uh, keeping in mind that we do want you here and also keeping in mind that we want to be fair to the people that have been here and have been uh, doing the things that we as we've done in the past so yeah, uh, I just wanted to echo that, that to you that is uh, you know we really want to make a good faith effort to make this happen and make it happen correctly uh, I, I hate for it to be at this later a time that it's actually come to us where uh, we could have done this earlier and uh, hopefully we can do that with the other people uh, that are involved in this uh, a little quicker. Thank you. Mr. Lambert. Yeah, I did a lot of what Kent says. You know, we have to be careful with this. That We have a lot of businesses moving into our parish, and like Kent says, you know, they have to furnish their own water and sewer, and, you know, this is a very profitable operation y'all have here, $2. billion earnings in the fiscal year, you know, and our smaller businesses are struggling to survive, and, uh, you know, and they have to pay for their own. So we have to be careful when we look at this. So, uh, I'd like the board to really think about it hard and maybe well, study uh, it hard. Even though Lowe's is very successful as a parent company, I mean that's because of the in each individual stores are successful, and uh, when they go through the real estate committee process, you know each each location is on its own merits, obviously, uh, and and part of you know a consideration. When this was was approved, was was our request. So uh, we, we're here. Yes, uh, were we anticipating getting the reimbursement for water and sewer? Yes, I mean we were anticipating that, uh, based on some prior discussions. But uh, yeah, like I said in my initial presentation, that was ca it was informal discussions. Nothing was was actually put in writing. And I guess this question, maybe, Mr. President, you know, we're told that they had a agreement with the water and sewer that this would be handled somewhat that you know of? No, sir. Lowe's, when, when did they first begin looking at coming to the parish? It's been over three years. Huh? Yeah, that's when you mentioned Ms. Collins, she was economic development. Right, right. So it's been quite a while. So I don't know what was said. Nothing put in writing. Right. And he said, now, Whenever, and I guess it's been what four, five, three, four months ago when you and I, and Mr. Valentine, yeah, about three months, I guess, right? Yeah, about three discussing months. Discussing this. Um, as I understand it, back when they first started looking for a property in Ascension Parish, part of their request, part of that process they were looking into was to get some help on the sewer and water side, utilities. 
for locating within the parish outside of municipalities now who said what and who did what back then obviously we don't know for sure Ty but this I think the big picture we need to look at here though is that this is becoming more of an issue all the time you know both from a fire and water situation and the franchise agree we now have an essential water helps us on the fire safety side and water is being improved but still the parish does not have control over that and that's a key part of economic development is utilities both water and sewer and so for the parish to compete favorably with municipal governments who have these services normally to offer to businesses uh, it's a challenge for us as we've been knowing for a long time now and so and it'd be quite a, a long time before we'll have sewer for example in highway 61 area public sewer uh, we may have it on highway 30 much sooner but to take it throughout the parish so a new business coming in be it a small business locally owned or a big business wanting to come to our parish it would be quite a while before we will have those quote unquote municipal type of utility services to offer to them and so I think we need to sit down and come up with a uh, at least a, a not a specific plan necessarily because I think you're going to have individual circumstances <coughs> that may vary but we need to have a general outline of a plan that when the business is going to do this now many times it'll be it's almost like the impact fee discussion we've had a long time <laughs> much of what you see here the infrastructure they're putting in is being required in the planning process because of the impact they're having he, men he mentioned Mr. Jennings mentioned the impact on traffic or maybe it was Mr. Newchair uh, DOTD obviously gets involved because that's a federal and state highway on either side the road that they're putting in between 61 and 44 will eventually become a parish road. So it'll be a locally owned parish road once they finish that. And so it's kind of like, remember Walmart came to Prairieville, we got them to pay for the drainage and we got them to pay for the pay. road improvements on Highway 61, three or four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't remember sewer and water being discussed. In this case, they're putting in, and some of the, their cost here is I appreciate and please correct me if I'm telling the council something inaccurate I don't remember all the details Jenny said Lowe's as a company agreed with the property owners to incur some costs for sewer to be made available in some out parcels that's correct Lowe's is using about half of this piece of property I would call 30 acres Lowe's is only using about 15 acres and so the other four or five out parcels will be owned by the real estate people and I understand part of the property agreement that you sign with them is to put in the sewer infrastructure for those four out parcels am I correct Matt? Yes, sir. I guess in the original purchase contract it was set up just like you mentioned that drainage water and sewer had to be provided for the residual tracks and that was put in at the request and the loads agreed to of the real estate people the property so owners before your time as well. well before both of our time, yes, okay. I want to make sure I didn't tell the council something that was incorrect. I thought that's what you guys had told me, and obviously that was something that we had nothing to do with, none of the, you know, none of the government's right. business, as a matter of fact. But so, I guess my point, Todd, is to all of us that we need a subcommittee to sit down with the administration and say, okay, let's look at these parameters. This is what we do, and this is what we don't do, uh, so we can let people know up front what will be happening and then they can make a decision based on that we come and we don't come but well, we are at a very competitive disadvantage many times sewer and water so we need to deal with that because obviously we need the, the tax base to continue growing inside the parish in unincorporated areas okay so Mr. Lambert you finished uh, just you know if we do this it will be opening the doors up every commercial business comes in this parish that needs a big sewer system, water facility. Be ready to, you know, open your doors for them also, because it's going to happen. Thank you, Mr. Hill's back. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, I'm glad y'all are located to the parish. I, I just, uh, I think I feel like a lot of people we'd like to see these numbers uh, up front versus now. 
And a question I have on your map, uh, is that also uh, out parcels? I got a very faded copy, but is that out, out parcels that will be developed to the west of your building between your building and airline highway, that, that large track there? Yes, sir, that's correct. There's one large, I think it's about four acres, um, triangular track between the Lowe's and the Okay, so you're gonna, you'll have a development to the west as well, yes, uh, as well as the four out parcels to the south? That's correct. Okay, okay, and uh, there'll be no other developments. You got the large retention pond to the uh, east and no developments to the north. Is, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. okay but one I, thing too, I guess I'd like to mention on the on the water line specifically is, I mean, I think it's roughly 3,400 linear foot of extension. So the benefit, I guess, an additional benefit to the parish, so to speak, is the service um, for whatever would happen between Lowe's moving north to where the line wasn't before. Well, I mean, that not only the line itself, but the fire hydrants that come with the line. That's exactly. So, so, yeah, so that's, that is, and, and again, I'm not at all against this. I just w would like for the subcommittee to sit down and take a look at it with uh, the chief financial officer and maybe the council chairman, Mr. Valentine. Who, who, along with the administration, has had some discussion, but let's let's make sure we click completely clear on it, and then let it come back to uh, the finance committee. You finished, Mr. Yeah, Joseph? I'm finished. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Yes, my question is: Do you have a time period that you need to answer back from us? Well, obviously, we're under construction now. Uh, the only thing that I guess would we would like to have. Uh, uh, I guess a timetable on would be the enterprise zone uh, rebate so that we can make sure our subcontractors uh, have itemized receipts showing the sales taxes paid on the construction materials so that we can get, get that process and get that done. But, uh, as far as the other. And what would the deadline be? I'm sorry. Uh, that's my, yeah. I mean, that's just, too uh, just internal for us, basically, for the enterprise zone program so that we can notify our contractors that that's a requirement for the, for the sales tax. I'm not sure, and Tanya may be able to answer that as far as the deadline. Finance maker. On that, Ms. Quinn. That's my question. Well, Mr. Joseph still has the floor. Right? Can go back to, no one knows the answer. Well, yeah, let well, make sure we understand what you're asking for. You know, on the one, you're asking for a one cent on the state, the school board, or, ju or just the parish one cent on dedicated parish. sales tax. He says local sales tax. Mr. Kurtz, well, please. Sure. Tommy Kurtz, uh, Ascension Economic Development Corporation. The Enterprise Zone program is a, is a tax credit program for jobs that are created, but there's also a mechanism that allows sales tax back from the state of 4% and then un, any undedicated sales taxes in a jurisdiction. In this case, it would be the one cent. So we're talking about two separate issues here. We're talking about a reimbursement to reimburse them for infrastructure, and separate from that is a one cent rebate option that the Enterprise Zone program allows them. So that two separate two separate entities here. Mr. Joseph, if you don't mind, I have a question oh, pertaining to your question. Mr. Kurtz, can the state rebate it and the parish do nothing? Correct. Or we have to participate with the state? No, that's correct. The local uh -huh. governing, governing body has the option of to participate or not participate. Have y'all approached the state or no? Oh, yes, yeah, we will. But that's, that's basically a guarantee. They, they, have, to, done deal. they have to file an advance notification. Right. So I assume right. you all have done that yes. already. Yes. So it's all it's all up to you all really okay. to, to do that. So, but once again, we're talking about two separate and two se separate issues here. Okay. Mr. Joseph. No. No. I'm, I'm done with. <laughs> Mr. Shakes Nina. Uh, and 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 I and I think that's something that that we need to sit down and, and, and take a look at as as a you know as we said a subcommittee so that we can make some decisions uh, to see what's the best way to help you guys uh, from that. Uh, w one thing, since it is a finance. Uh, uh, meeting, and uh, and I, I think one of the things that's so attractive about Ascension Parish is is, is people and uh, the, the sense of, of businesses helping in the community and helping uh, our youth, a uh, school system, and things of that sort. Uh, all the people that we have mentioned uh, before, the local people, um, we've had people come in, big boxes, so to speak that have come in uh, and taking uh, a share of, uh, of, the, of the monies uh, from uh, local entities. 
And when the school system, uh, and not school system, but when, uh, for example, the extravaganza that's going on now to raise monies for the athletic programs at the different high schools and everything, which is the way we've been able to fund our programs for our youth at a level which we think they should be, uh, we, we've gone out and, and, and all local businesses jump out there and, and assist us a great deal with our kids. And uh, then as the market share is taken away by the big boxes coming in, we still, the only way we can turn to is the local businesses which continue to support us even though the market share drops. And, and it's very, very hard to get a commitment from a box to fill that void, so to speak, uh, at the local level for our youth, for our, uh, uh, our programs that we have that, that we want to continue to, to fund in the proper way for our youth. And I would just like uh, you guys as representatives of Lowe's to have some sort of plan that would, would step up and help support uh, our youth in that and not something that's contingent upon uh, having a car wash at, at Lowe's so we can uh, raise $200 for the soccer program or something like that, but that uh, you do set aside some, some monies that can be supplied to, in a proper manner as you deem fit to our youth and, and, and that would be uh, representative of, of the monies that you do take uh, you know, from this community and, and pour it back into the community. I think that's, that's something that's important even though it uh, sometimes we think that's insignificant and uh, I think that's something that we need to take a look at and, and, and we would very respectfully ask you to make that a priority and, and continue to do what the local people have done. Uh, so hard with the sacrifice because I think that's something we're all very proud of. Lowe's is very proud of their track record in community involvement and we pride ourselves to be a good corporate citizen. Uh, obviously the stores we made up of, of, of uh, people that live and reside here in, in Ascension Parish and Gonzales, uh, they're going to be local folks working in, in the store, in the Lowe's store. And we, um, so as far as a local store level, yes, they're very active collectively in the community. Corporate-wise, uh, then the Community Foundation Board Lowe's uh, uh, generates, actually, I mean, contributes, uh, well, significant amount, I want to do a dollar amount, I'm not exactly sure, but they do a significant amount of money into the local communities and to the, to the uh, communities where we have Lowe's stores. Um, regarding uh, your, your, your statement about market share, what we have found uh, is that uh, I know when, whenever, typically, when a when we when Lowe's is in a community and another big box store comes in a community, uh, sometimes our sales will drop down, but they'll rebound back up. Uh, what we see in communities that there's not a big box store, uh, typically we we're, we see a lot of retail leakage, basically meaning that if you're going to shop at Lowe's here, then you're going to shop at Lowe's in another neighboring city or town, and uh, typically. Uh, what you'll have when, it lows, when the lows here in Ascension opens up is you'll have a recapture of a lot of retail leakage that's going out. And um, obviously it generates, the store generates a lot of traffic at this location, and um, which will be, is, traffic's good for retail, obviously. And um, so they, they might be an initial impact, but you know, as we've seen in other big box retails in small community, it, they build the traffic and uh, a lot of many cases, it's, uh, I know in my hometown in North Carolina, uh, it's actually a big box. We have both, we have two big boxes in our community and we're a small rural community and uh, it's actually helped our downtown by keeping the folks in, in the area and still leaving. Our restaurants have, 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 be, have benefited greatly because of the increased traffic, obviously. So we're all like the new restaurants coming in town. We realize that, and we just appreciate any help you can give us as part of the community. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think we had some pretty good, pretty good discussion. I don't believe we're going to solve anything tonight. Do you have a comment, Mr. McConnell? Just, just a very brief on. one, Mr. Byer, okay. here because uh, you know my my love of brevity on some of these <laughs> meetings. But um, um, when I when I seconded that motion, it was it was for discussion, and I didn't completely hear Mr. Hillensbeck when he said uh, suggested making it a subcommittee. This is a very vital issue that we're going to be dealing with 
uh, more and more as as population grows, as we try to make Ascension Parish more attractive for businesses to locate here. And so uh, my recommendation would be that uh, while we take this under consideration, that uh, if, if you want to make it a subcommittee, let's make it a subcommittee of the whole, and that uh, each of us be consulted. And uh, and we talk about it. we don't have to have one or two uh, subcommittee meetings if, if that's not feasible. But I, I, I think everybody needs to learn more about it. Rather than having a small subcommittee meeting and then coming back uh, at the next finance committee and try to explain to the finance committee next month what we've done. Um, I, I think we, let, let's go ahead and, and get off the pot on this and, and get it done and make it a subcommittee of the whole, have all everybody be uh, met with, and uh, then we can come back and prepare to, uh, to answer this question or this query at the next finance committee so that we, when we can then turn and, and uh, and uh, make a recommendation to the full council. But obviously this is something that we're going to have to consider again for the future and we're going to have to make a policy um, uh, that we're going to have to deal with. But this issue is at hand. Uh, construction is underway. Uh, we, we do have a lot of other retailers who are watching and, and waiting to see what goes on. So I, I, would, I would request respectfully that we make a subcommittee of the whole and that each council uh, member be consulted. If, and we come back and be prepared to have an answer at the next finance committee meeting in uh, May. Thank you. That'd be the case. If y'all want it to be the of the whole, we don't have to call it a subcommittee. We can just call a couple sure. special working meetings and get it done, if, yeah. if that'd be the wish. So, uh, I'm in my motion want. then to uh, just make it a special committee meeting of the whole. Motion a minute by Mr. Helmsback. Second. Second by Mr. Lambert. Any objection? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Number six, Lamar Dixon report. Mr. Eddie Crawford. Good evening, Council. You should have a copy of our February financial report. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you look at that first page, uh, as always, about halfway down, you'll see that we, we operated uh, just uh, $1,120 uh, short of our projected budget. Uh, so February was a, a good month for us. February was a good month for us. Uh, the South Central Livestock Show was there, very successful. LSU is always uh, comes in for seven days as well. Uh, great increase of the crowd. Um, if you'll look down at our indirect, our direct event income notes, um, there under B, the, we projected the LSU Livestock Show to kind of rebound a little bigger than than we hoped from the storm, but still uh, that event is growing for us, uh, and we look forward. Uh, right now, we're in negotiations to extend that contract for another two years. Uh, going back, um, if you'll look up there at the note next, uh, label A, uh, that rodeo and livestock show was originally uh, was going to be a three-day event for us. Uh, the promoter reduced that down to a one-day event, but has signed a, a three-year contract. He is in the process of growing, did very well this first year as well. Uh, as we move on to page two, <coughs> under ancillary income, uh, you'll see there uh, that note listed as A was also part of that uh, rodeo and livestock show. Uh, the concessions weren't there as, as he reduced his show from a three-day event to a two-day event. So that's what that number is. Um, moving on down, um, under other operating income, uh, the big story there is still our non-revenue uh, or non-show event uh, RV hookups. Uh, we, we're maintaining about uh, 60 trailers out there with uh, transient workers uh, basically working in the local plants, things like that. So we're, we're maintaining that. We, we stay at about 60, drop down to 50, and, and it comes back up. But uh, those folks, some of them are staying with us six to eight months at a time. Uh, we have also uh, just something to mention, the advertising income. We didn't quite hit the number we were looking for. We had budgeted 25000 for the uh, month we uh, we came in at fifteen thousand. We'll continue to look for those sponsorship dollars out there. We've we've kind of held off doing this at this point uh, with the bicentennial and other events. The promoters are out there seeking those sponsorship dollars too. So we'd rather those folks get that support and then come to us with with their money in hand. Uh, but we'll continue to pick that up. Uh, indirect expenses coming down the list. Um, we have one here mentioned. Uh, uh, letter A, you'll see, that was a uh, waste removal from a show we had in December that uh, we will have to expense in the in the February months. Um, let's see. There's also uh, you'll see that letter B. Um, uh, that was a twenty thousand uh, dollars bad debt expense. That's an error on our part. We should have spread that across 
our, our year. That should have been divided over the 12 months. So it, it shows up right there. We'll have to go back and make an adjustment for that. Uh, moving on page three, uh, again, this kind of shows the highlight to the year so far. <coughs> Excuse me, you'll see that we had, uh, we had budgeted to run uh, at, a, at a positive number of $12,000. $365. Uh, we actually hit uh, $59,069 for a positive uh, variance of $46,704. Uh, so as, as like last year, the first quarter is, is good for us so far. Uh, I think our March numbers will look very similar to last year as well. We, we've got a strong month of March coming around as well. Uh, on page four, uh, this is the sheet where we combined uh, the parish expenses along with, with ours. <coughs> Um, as it flows on down to the bottom, it reflects basically what our year end uh, looked like with the $46,704 uh, as the positive variance right now. Uh, page five is our balance sheet. Um, moving on to page uh, six, this kind of shows our accounts receivable. We still have some, uh, some outstanding uh, uh, debt out there for um, totaling $5,383. Uh, most of those folks do annual uh, business with us, so we will quite possibly what typically happens is we, we catch this up on the next contract as a contractor for their 07 dates. Uh, we'll be able to collect that money. And then finally, page seven, <clears throat> again, is another, just a, a different spreadsheet, a different look at our, our year to date so far. Um, I think there's, there's more detail back there in page three or four if, if you would look at that. Uh, things are going very well out of the property. We've, uh, we've spent a lot of money on, on maintenance, getting the place cleaned up, some painting, uh, not as quite as many repairs as we had last year as far as, as big repairs, valve repairs, <coughs> things like that. So uh, we've been basically focusing on, on taking care of the events, getting the calendar uh, stocked up with a, a, a good diversity of, of events. We've got the, the bicentennial coming in, uh, in next week. Uh, the uh, Crawfish Nationals, which is, I mean, I'm sorry, the Cajun Nationals, which is the BMX event that will draw uh, a national crowd in for us, uh, folks coming in from Canada, Mexico, things like that. So we're looking forward to that. This weekend we have, uh, or actually this week, we have the Louisiana uh, Fire Chiefs Convention. Uh, that's taking place in our um, banquet rooms and in the trademark facility. We have the Homeyer uh, tool sale out there as well. The, uh, the Parks Group, that is the, the model airplane group that is, was out there flying. They're having a fly-in now, and they've got groups coming in from as far away as Florida. So uh, there's a lot going on out at Lamar. We encourage you all to come out and visit us. Uh, the YMCA's uh, soccer programs and softball programs are, are gearing up. And uh, the rest of this uh, first quarter looks is very encouraging. We are currently, like I said, in negotiations to extend the LSU contract. Um, we are also negotiating with uh, the, the folks who are in charge of the, the jazz festival to uh, try to get the Cajun country jamboree in here for October. So uh, very encouraged about 07. If, uh, if everything continues the way we are, we should be, be on track. Any questions? Ms. Fatno. I have one, Eddie. I'm not <clears throat> sure, and I need maybe to see if you can answer my question. Sure. Who is responsible for cutting the grass on the other side of the YMCA that's used by the uh, YMCA for soccer? Uh, they have a private contractor. We uh, we get out there. To is help. that by is that done by by the Y? Um, yes, ma'am. They, they they take care of their their soccer field. It's probably probably maybe a half acre, and they have a private contractor that they deal with. Okay, uh, I was just wondering because I had a constituent complain that they took the three-year-olds out there to practice soccer, and the grass was taller than the kids. Yes, ma'am. We uh, so I, I and I wasn't sure who was responsible. They asked me and. I really didn't have a they, clear uh, answer. They came to us without request, uh, a kind of last minute. And we, we, I, cut the grass for them. So it was, it was a little rough. But uh, we, we would hope that we could get out there and help them if their contractor cannot uh, keep up. The, the, the grass is a, is a big concern for us as well. But uh, that was kind of a last minute uh, effort, and, and we did it. But t t typically, they have a private contractor who cuts that. And my other question is, I also had a constituent down the street from me that was concerned about the the airplane flying is is that program something that's that a group uh rents and pays to do 
or can just anybody go out there and fly a plane? Currently we have an agreement with them. They are part of a national organization. They, uh, they have insurance, they have, uh, it is, they have to have identification cards. It was, we started looking at try to, uh, trying to program activities out there that would be low impact on the property and low impact on the operation. Um, folks that would go out there and kind of govern themselves. So this is kind of our test group. They're out there right now. Um, they're cutting their own grass. They maintain their fields. And all we basically do is open the gates for them. We check their, their cards. They come out there and they fly. There's, there's no fee. There is no fee. Yeah. Is there any kind of signed agreement with it? I, I guess I'm asking this particular constituent was once a part of that group ah. and has since kind of broken away from that group. And his concern is, why would they be allowed to fly? I mean, if it's a public facility, if we're, you know, if we're kind of promoting it as a public facility, you know, he had some questions that since he no longer wants to be with the group and he can't fly. Right. And so I'm, I guess I'm asking, should we have an, you know, an agreement that somebody makes with us? I think it's because it's we, kind of confusing to the public if, if you know, if they're perceiving that there's a group from the public that's that's allowed to go out there, and others are not. Right. Uh, I think it's something we'll 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 have to address pretty quickly. Um, that that property is is very desirable for joggers, bike riders. That's what I'm saying. Fishing. Um, right now, our concern, uh, ours, and for the parish. Uh, was liability issues. Um, do we just open the gates and let folks go back there? How would we keep it clean? Who's going to insure those folks? How does that work? We're working with Parks and I, I hate to interrupt, but this could be something okay. we could discuss in, in the subcommittee for Lamar Dixon. Actual activities on it. Let's talk finance or we have any questions on finance for Lamar Dixon. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's fine. I'll stay at on okay. time. Just had some questions while he was here. Anything else, Ms. Fontenot? That's it. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have Martin X. Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Eddie, uh, let's let's go back to page number three of your report. Okay. This has just been something that's kind of recurred um, uh, periodically over the years, uh, that or over the year or so that you've been there. Uh, we, you know, we we pretty much kind of hit the the number of events. You know, sometimes we have fewer events, sometimes we have more, but it seems like there's always a greater attendance in actual attendance than you've budgeted. For instance, you budgeted 23,750 people to attend your events. You actually received 8,208 more people than, uh, than you actually budgeted to attend these different events. However, you showed an $8,000 direct event income loss and you showed a roughly $18,000 ancillary income loss. And, uh, and that's kind of been steady the, these last several months. You, we have a greater uh, attendance there than you've budgeted, but there's a direct income loss. And I just, why is that? I, How do I, you attribute that? In my, my opinion right now, it, it is, we've been steadily trying to bring our, uh, our promoters and our events up to what we would con consider an industry standard uh, rental rate uh, of all of our equipment, the property, buildings, everything like that. We have not quite hit that, that number yet. We're allowing our, our promoters to grow their events uh, so their attendance is up. The sportsman show is up. Um, most of them are up right now. We have not been able to get that, hit that number yet with the rental without scaring some folks off. So with with rental and the parking, all those types of things, we're not quite there yet. I mean, parking is, is for instance, is one of the big ones that is really scaring some of these folks. Um, so we're we're walking them down the path. Uh, so I think what we'll see here soon is we will have to eventually go to an increase. And, and, and get these promoters to come along with us. Um, so I think right now, we, that's where we're at. Their events are growing. We're not there yet with them as far as the income that we're taking in. And, um, and you just mentioned parking, so I wanted to ask about that. We, you know we have the bicentennial of the parish coming up next week, a week and a half from now. And it's a free event for the people to attend but there's a $5 parking charge. Uh, has that more or less been what you've been doing on some of these other events? We have, uh, we've only been charged now, uh, we're charging now for two events for parking right now, and this was, this was kind of the test. Their, their actual, their ticket price was high enough that we felt like what, what's going, what's happening typically right now is an entry fee for an event is 5 to $7. If we tack on a $3 parking fee at this point, um, 
several of the promoters are concerned that they will they will lose people and they will have to move their events. So that's one of the areas, sponsorship dollars and parking is where we're going to have to go next. Uh, we're trying to do that before we, we make the, the rate increase on the rentals and stuff like that. So it's, it's, a, it, it's kind of a system that we're trying to follow right now. We're not trying to chase anybody off, but we will eventually will have to get to that point where, uh, you know, in, a, in our mind, that place is the palace and it costs to play there. So. Thank you. That, that, that helps me out. I mean, I, I've just been curious about that for a while, that we've had greater attendance, but actually uh, a lesser income than budgeted from direction. Now, you have other operating income that, that was much greater than anticipated, and so that kind of helped you out uh, uh, in terms of the whole budget. So, I, I, yeah, things work out, but it, it sure would be nice if, if the, the attendance would match the income for each right. uh, each thing. So I'm, I'm assuming that's something that SMG is looking at. That's, we're uh, watching that closely. We've we've got to, and I say we with our promoters with with the events, everybody out there. We have got to make that adjustment now to to make it uh, worth the while. Because I think if these numbers could match up, if these mm -hmm. numbers could be uh, a little more equitable among themselves, then that that would go a long way towards. Uh, Lamar Dixon paying, not paying his way, but breaking even. Right. Uh, anyway. Right. Okay. Thanks, Ed. Thank Appreciate you. you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's it. Mr. Schechtsteiner. Yes, uh, yes. Eddie, we appreciate what you're doing. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I, I do think we're coming to the point where people are accepting the, the parking. Uh, w whenever you can go to an event and you have parking that is a designated area that's safe and it's lighted and it's convenient for the people, I think pretty much it's accepted by the public that, that, that there's a fee just about every, everywhere we go for any type of events, whether it be the Superdome or Baton Rouge or the River Center or whatever. Uh, you, you pay for parking, and and so uh, I, I do think we're. I understand what you're doing, but I do think we're coming to that point where people do understand that uh, you, your car is going to be safe in the parking lots and everything, and so that that is something that uh, people are willing to do since uh, uh, very good parking, adequate parking is provided. So uh, yeah, I, I don't we'll, we'll go to that there. fee pretty soon. And again, it's a, it's a big concern for our promoters. There, they're they're afraid of that. You know, three dollar charge. If we don't charge any more than that, then it's not worth putting an operation right. out there with, to pay for itself. So, we're we're heading that direction. But uh, I think again, we're trying not to to chase anybody off at this point. Mr. Hillens, back. Yeah, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, back to page three eighty. Uh, mm -hmm. The first two months through two thousand six, we had thirty seven events, and for the first two months this year, we had forty six events, which is uh, that's terrific that you're getting the number of events up, uh, especially considering we're still in that post Katrina er uh, era of uh, the recovery of the economy. And we uh, exactly, exactly budgeted was thirty seven, actual was forty six. So you're you're ahead by nine events. And and uh, I guess the question I have, you, you mentioned uh, negotiating with the jazz fest people for the Cajun country, country festival. They're, Is that going to be the signature that event? Well. That we feel um, like we need for to help put Lamar Dixon on the map. That will be a very good, uh, what I would call an anchor event for us in the fall. An uh, anchor we, event uh, yes, is that we, same thing we talk about. Yeah, that, I think uh, we've been using signature event. That one, uh, that one, I think uh, they will. That one will grow, and uh, I would hope to see that one grow to a two weekend event. Yeah. Eventually, they were they came up for the Louisiana Sportsman Show, saw the facility, you know, in action. We, you know, with the, with the traffic going on, the, the different. We actually had the Louisiana. Uh, uh, horse Expo going on as well, so they got to see the property, you know, 60% occupied and and how the traffic flows. They were very encouraged. Uh, they spent about two hours out there with us, so um, I I feel like that one is is coming coming to. Well, I commend tuition. you on the job you're doing you. and bringing bringing folk, you know, the additional events in, and and uh, we certainly need to nail down that uh, that signature event or anchor event, whatever we're going to call yes, it. And so I uh, wish you success in negotiating that. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Salvar. Yeah, Eddie, how many events have we charged for parking, you said? Uh, right now, only two. Two? Uh, only two. Uh, and that's, that's like I said, we've, we've looked at that uh, as, as a, oh, what was the public and the general public going to say, what were the, were the promoters going to say? Uh, the general public has not, has not been as negative as the promoters. Uh, and again, this is not money that's coming out of their pocket. And so when we're talking with them, we're telling them, you know, this is a way that we can do it without hitting, hitting your bottom line. But it's it's coming, and eventually, with the have to be rate increases that will hit their bottom line, or or shared expenses that will be put out to the general public as well. Okay, that's all. I have. 
Any further comments, questions for Mr. Crawford? Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very Crawford. much. Seven, food incubator and small business expansion budget amendment. Mr. Kurtz, Ascension Economic Development Corporation. And also. Good evening, members of the Finance Committee. Uh, Edie is going to be passing out some uh, background on the food incubator. Uh, we're coming to you tonight for a budget amendment. Uh, and I believe a, we had sent to Suzanne a breakdown of, the, of a budget of the actual detailed uh, of the budget amendment of 39580 uh, This is to help um, a market and put money into uh, equipment for the incubator uh, for the next uh, eight months. Uh, as you all know, uh, in addition to our day-to-day -day economic development activities, uh, we also are working on other projects such as the mega site, the business park uh, development for the parish, and we've raised an additional uh, $91,000 to help fund those efforts through grants and, and private contributions. Of that $91,000, $40,000 has been uh, for, uh, for, the, um, uh, for the incubator, uh, for equipment, some matching grants from the state, and also some seed money to get it off the ground. So what we're asking for tonight is, is funds to help market the facility, especially since the grant that we received recently from the state of Louisiana through the Department of Economic Development included uh, funding for a, um, a bottling uh, equipment, basically for sauces and spices, which makes us the only facility in the state to do that. So the funds would help in marketing the facility around the state to bottle sauces, Louisiana sauces and spices, and also allow us to market that around the state and put money up for matching funds for next year. The state is going to have an additional $300,000 for uh, incubators around the state that we would have matching funds then to go after additional equipment. So but I'd also like Edie Michelle to talk about some of the tenants that we have in there because there are there are not only just tenants from Ascension Parish, but we have tenants that are from around really South Louisiana, and this would help us grow this into uh, you know top-notch facility, but also help grow the food industry in Ascension Parish in the general, the Baton Rouge region. I left out the name of the prospective tenants. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, explain a little something to you about becoming a tenant in um, the Louisiana Edible Creation Center. What we're doing is we're trying to grow small businesses. And when they come into, it's not as easy as signing a contract, paying your deposit, and coming in. When you're trying to grow these small businesses that are dealing in the food, there's a lot of rules, regulations, the FDA regulations, there's nutritional values that they have to get analyzed, they have a, a barcodes they have to get purchased, um, there's labeling, they have to find out if their pH level is going to uh, allow their, so it's not as easy as getting a just a family recipe, going into the kitchen, multiplying it times 10 and sending it out on the shelves. There's a lot more to it. So the people that we have uh, indicated in red have already signed a contract with us and they are in some level of getting into the kitchen to make product. Um, we ha it, it varies. There's a lot of Louisiana influence in here. Um, there is a dry gumbo mix gentleman that we're working with out of New Iberia. His daughter's at LSU in food science. He wants to make a dry gumbo mix. He, w he needs a commercial health inspected kitchen in order to do that. And this facility lends itself perfectly for that purpose. Um, we were contacted actually by Raising Cane's. They wanted to do some development of some product and did not, obviously did not have a test kitchen in order to do that. They have contacted us. Um, there's a, a local gentleman who, want, he's a local entrepreneur actually, who has a recipe um, where he wants to take instant, he wants to make coffee and he wants to put it into cubes and be able to pop it in the morning into a microwave, zap it, add whatever he needs to and make instant coffee. Um, instead of, you know, percolating eight, eight cups of it and you just want one to go or if you just need that caffeine fix in the middle of the day, you can just pop it out of your freezer. So um, I have with me a couple of uh, products just, just to give you some examples. This lady um, is a minority business. I don't know if this will work right here. Will it work like this? Yeah. This is a minority business lady who's going to be coming into the kitchen. She has a um, contract with Aramark, and she is also going to be doing some work, hopefully, for the mayor of Baton Rouge. She's a minority businesswoman. She does uh, cookies and candies, and so uh, we have been working with her for quite a, a while. Um, this is a, a 
You can what pass that up front and we'll sample it if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually. You might not get past me, Mr. Yeah, or, <laughs> well, let's start it on our Right, that's good. That's this is a this is a bottling. Uh, the the bottling capabilities is a single piston filler that we have. At, uh, it's arriving actually next week, and we received this grant from the Louisiana Business Incubator. Um, I don't know if Tommy said we are the only kitchen incubator in the state of Louisiana. We're about the 13th around the country. Um, this lady, it's going to enable her to start her product. She can do as as few as one, as many as several hundred. She's going to pay per hour to use the kitchen and to use our bottling equipment but this is um, she can bottle anything from a two ounce to a one gallon with this piece of equipment it has a ciphering capabilities to cipher from the kettle that's at Lamar Dixon into the into the of the piston and give equal amounts we also had to buy a capper in order to cap the equipment uh, to cap the bottle um, this is a fish fry um, this is another piece of packaging equipment that we received through our grant and um, this is going to pack, this is a fish fry. It has a cellophane bag that we order, um, comes in about 10 cents a piece. And the person is going to, this is a local entrepreneur who wants to take his business to another level. He wants to start taking his product, it's not John Foles, but as a John Foles, and bring it into the marketplace and sell it. So this is just an example of some of the products and the people that we're working with. Um, we're getting calls daily. It started out slow and it it's really has become a, a great a great project. We're working with LSU, uh, the Food Science Center. The incubator sends us people. Uh, we have several other food manufacturers around the state that cannot, do not want to handle something as small as a te being a test kitchen. They don't want to do 50 bottles of barbecue sauce or even 500 bottles of barbecue sauce. So there's really never been a place where a small business food entrepreneur can go and do small test testing. You finished, Mr. Chair? I finished. Yeah. Mr. McCosh, that you may have. Mr. Chairman, this is just one more thing that makes Ascension Parish unique and it makes us proud to be here in Ascension Parish. So I'd like to offer a motion Second. that we recommend that they, we amend the budget to grant their request. Motion by Mr. McConnell to amend the budget Second. request by Economic Development. Second by Mr. Hillensbeck. Any further discussion? Any opposition? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you for your continued support. Thank, Thank you, you much. Thank you. Number eight, fire district number one, seventh district renovation bid on new station on Highway 44. Mr. Charles Aver, Commissioner, fire district number one. We need to go. Good evening, council members and chairman. The uh, seventh district fire station has been a uh, topic of conversation for a long time but we are now at the point to where we need to let it out for bid we have uh, worked with uh, Ken Jones architect out of Baton Rouge who have had meetings with 7th district and Ken and the fire board all together and we have all the, the quirk worked out so now we're looking at the next step just to go ahead and uh, advertise it for bid. So we're requesting y'all approval so to do Mr. that. Chairman, second. Mo motion by Mr. Lambert, second by Mr. McConnell. Any questions, discussion, any opposition? Discussion. Mr. Savoy. What, you're ready to go out for bid? How's that? Is, did I understand you say you're ready to go out for bid? Yes, sir. Okay. Charles. What's the anticipated cost on this project? Somewhere around eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Do tell me what did the council budget or the fire board budget for this? A million two hundred thousand. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. I would. You finished, Mr. Sawyer? Yes, sir. Mr. Hillen's back. Oh. Uh, I would imagine the bid to come in higher than eight hundred thousand if they know we've got a budget of a million two, but that's after the fact. So. <laughs> well, now that's our, our operating budget. We can't spend all of that on this one building, but yeah. until we go out for bid, we don't know what monies we have to come up with. So that's our next step. Well, I, I would encourage that uh, we do everything to stay within that budget as, <laughs> as tight as the parish budget is because. Right. Well, some some of the cost increases come with delays, you yeah. know. Right. 
So now we, we're just ready to go ahead and advertise for bid. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine with it. Thank you. Let's find out. I just wanted to make the statement that I know our firemen do the very best they can to manage their money, and I'm proud. Uh, I'm proud to know that and proud of all the work that you guys do, and I uh, look forward to you getting this project completed. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Uh, Patterson, at the record, Second. reflect Mr. Valentine has made the meet. Any further discussion? Any opposition? Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Abair. Thank you all. Number 9A, Sales and Use Tax Report, Ms. Gwen LeBlanc, CFO, Treasurer. Good evening, members of the Finance Committee. Uh, you have before you your normal report for the uh, sales and use tax. And on the first page, you can see that um, East Ascension drainage actually went down a little bit, just year to date, 1.23. The reason for that basically is because of leveling off of retail from the high uh, increases we saw post Katrina, and which also brought about a departure for a FEMA contract that was in the city of Gonzales who contributed greatly to that percent of increase. The one cent sales tax is year to date up 7.85 and the half cent sales tax is uh, up 8%. And of course on the uh, far right you can see the budget comparisons to the budget for 2007 and the percents they're up over our budget at this point in the year. Of course this is the uh, month of March but it's a collection march, so it'd be, it would represent February's sales. And then if you look at the charts, the pie chart on page two, this is just a depiction of where we're collecting our sales taxes in the parish. And this is year to date, 07 only, January through March. And you can see that uh, starting on the left, the largest slice of the pie is the petrochemical industry and, and also their suppliers. That represents 45% of our collections thus far this year. And then the next slice would be the uh, consumer retail. And as you can see, that represents 31% of our uh, collections this year. And then following on down was motor vehicles at 15%, and then business to business at 9%. And of course, as we explained last time, this typically represents businesses that do not sell, uh, the majority of their business is not sales to individuals, but rather they sell to other businesses. An example would be your bow companies and the building supply companies. So that's just a, a, a look at where our sales are being generated in our parish thus far this year. And then the third chart is the bar chart. And this, now this is a comparison year to date, 07 compared to 06. And we're using just the one cent sales tax as our, our sample here. And so you can see that uh, 07 compared to 06 is generally more favorable this year. There's only one sector that is down, and these are the same sectors that you just saw in your pie chart. So the consumer uh, retail was up. As you can see, that represents about a three and a half percent increase. Motor vehicles is the only sector that is down from 06, and that's down eight percent. And naturally, we saw the high uh, sales in motor vehicles post Katrina also, and that's leveling off. And then the business to business that we talked about is up 16 percent, and then the petrochemical petrochemical industry and their suppliers they're up 13, almost 14 percent. And then the last page is the, the normal historical depiction of our sales taxes in each of our sales tax districts. And once again, you can see that 2006 was our highest sales tax collection in the history of Ascension Parish. So I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have any. Questions, comments? Thank you, Ms. LeBlanc. Okay, and uh, next we'll turn it over to Sandra P Pereira, our legal, uh, paralegal. Contract renewals is 9B. Ms. Sandra Pereira, paralegal. Um, you should all have your copies in front of you. Uh, the first one is a renewal 
uh, fine between Roberto Macedo and Associates. That's a move, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion by Mr. McConnell, second by Mr. Salvoy. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. Number two. Uh, this is a renewal between ETEL and uh, the parish for the Sunshine Pages for so the edition. Moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion by Mr. Lambert, second by Mr. McConnell. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. Um, B3, Louisiana Staffing, Temporary Services, Temporary Employees, excuse me. Yes, this is also a renewal. No changes from last year, just for. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. McConnell, second by second. Mr. Savoy. Any op any question? Any opposition? Motion carries. B4, Capital Area Human Services, Mental Health Board, and Parish of Ascension to provide mental health services to residents of Ascension Parish. So Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Savoy, second, second by Mr. Lambert. Uh, discussion, Ms. Fontenot. Just want to make sure that this has been approved by the Mental Health Board. Yes, Ms. Betis was supposed to be here tonight, but I'm, I'm not sure if she something came up or not. But it's okay. been approved. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. B5, LSU and the Parish of Ascension, GIS consult consultation and technical support. So move, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion by Mr. Savoy, second by Ms. Fontenot. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carried. Thank you. C, new contracts. Excuse me, we're to carry C. We move on to 10 juvenile probation grant, grant years 2005 through 2006. Ms. Collins, grant office. Mr. Chairman, members of the council. Uh, this is a juvenile probation grant that is a reimbursable. This is a renewal. It actually comes through the uh, our um, Tony Faltman's office, the assistant DA, or our DA rather. The amount of the grant was 10000 and it was a match between the parishes match, which we are required to do under the contract that we signed an agreement with the DA's office. That we are, the portion that the match is is 11000 100 Eleven dollars and eleven cents. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Second. Motion by Mr. Hillensbeck, second by Mr. Lambert. I just need to make a record that our portion that we will be asking your approval for is seven hundred and forty dollars and seventy-four cents. Is what the parish's portion is for this. Discussion, for Mr. Salvo. Yeah, where, where's the grant going to? What department is the grant going to? Actually, it's an agreement. It goes to the DA's office, and it's a corporate endeavor that we signed um, as a group, working group. This has been done for years. Uh, the school board signs off on it. The uh, municipalities, there, there were three parishes. Any further discussion? Any I opposition? gave it to you. Thank Motion you. Motion carried. Thank you, Ms. Collins. <laughs> Number 11, Jail Construction Fund, Mr. Ron Signal. Good evening, Council. Uh, I believe most of you have got a memo that I put out this afternoon. Uh, this item came to my attention yesterday. I was given an uh, invoice, an architectural invoice, the second invoice for jail construction uh, funding and design. And at that point, in talking with uh, the accounting department, it appears that uh, we need to take some approval action of some sort uh, to continue. Basically, the situation is there's a budget of a million dollars for jail construction set aside at this point, and uh, we're going to go way beyond that. There's also been no approval as to the actual design in terms of the number of beds at this point. I believe the budget, best I can find out, the million dollars was budgeted based on a 100-man facility. Currently, this design evidently has proceeded with a 240-man uh, capacity, um, and, and that's fine, and whatever the council wants to do is, is your decision, uh, but there will have to be more money, and there needs to be some formal approval of those documents before we proceed any further. Mr. Valentine. I'm curious, Mr. Ziegler, what are you asking us for? Well, uh, you may not have all these memos. 
steps that need to take place. If you can, wait till you get back to the mic so everyone can hear you, please. From a budgetary and project management standpoint, we're kind of we're, we're kind of at a point. First, someone needs to make a decision of exactly what size facility we're going to build. Uh, evidently, the architect has not received official notification, but has begun designing a 240-man facility. Uh, the estimated cost for that, if you look in your package, I got that cost sheet. The last one, uh, probably about 5 o'clock this afternoon, we'll put the overall cost of this jail expansion, uh, including the $2 million sewer extension to Donaldsonville, at roughly this updated number at about $8.6 million for the total project. That's not putting aside any money for relocating a ditch that the uh, parish could do with its own manpower and equipment. Uh, in the current budget, there's $1 million budgeted for that. And we're, we're at a point where basically any future architectural fees would need a, um, theoretically need a budget amendment. And certainly there's not enough money under the current budget even to do the, to do the uh, sewer extension or continue with any more additional architectural fees this year. But probably there's enough money to require some sort of special uh, Mr. Chair, yes, sir. Um, I, I, Council, we are still in the uh, in, in discussions with the sheriff. In fact, Mr. Savo and I uh, have a meeting uh, with the sheriff next Wednesday. I think it is uh, dealing with this uh, with the jail expansion. The, the, the council had taken it on and had placed it and suggested a million dollars for expansion, uh, <coughs> but after the extreme uh, growth uh, situation here in Ascension Parish and the sheriff uh, looking at his facilities and, and t discussing with uh, some council members. Um, there has been some discussion. I think everybody's aware that, that the, the, the sheriff would uh, uh, or is suggesting that we uh, have increased a little bit more beds. And so we had already approved the architectural fees dealing with the 100 bed uh, expansion and we're actually uh, looking at a bigger expansion, and, I, and I'm assuming that's what this is. That's a bill has come in, and, and it's for a larger expansion. That's correct. Um, so and, and, what, and what it is, it, it's more of a, a dormitory-type uh, setting. We probably have one of the best of maximum security facilities uh, in South Louisiana as far as maximum security, uh, but this would be more of a... Um, I don't want to say a minimum security, but a dormitory style uh, where he could handle the influx of, of the uh, increased uh, prisoner population is what it amounts to. And it's a um, cheaper way, too. To uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to suggest that uh, we go ahead and uh, approve the payment of, of uh, because it needs to go on the agenda for next week. Uh, they the, the approve the payment for this invoice. Uh, pending the outcome of our discussions next week, um, and of course uh, we can we can have some discussion um, at that time. If it's, if it's not settled at that time, if I need to talk with legal or we need to talk with legal as far as the council's responsibility with this, uh, we can discuss that before the meeting. But I'm going to suggest we go ahead and put it on the agenda and make that motion uh, that we go ahead and, and, and take care of this invoice, but have, have council approval at at the. Uh, Council meeting next uh, week, uh, Councilman Barrett. Motion by Mr. Valentine to approve. Second, Second by Mr. Helmsbeck. <coughs> Any further discussion? Mr. Shakespeare. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, also, uh, during that time, uh, Mr. Valentine, if we could also look into funding and, and, and how we're going to bond this out or, or whatever. And, right, and that's what the discussion is next okay. next week with right. the sheriff. In fact, um, um, Mr. Shakespeare, may, because uh, it it involves your district. You, you may want to attend. I'll, I'll send you the email on that. The sheriff wanted to try to keep it as small as possible, but but so we can just get some get try to get some work done on, on, on trying to move forward on how we how much we need to bond and, and what to bond to, to, to get this accomplished. We we still are are uh, supplying money for for uh, inmates that are outside the parish, and we've considered all these uh, uh, situations and the money that we're spending on top of, of what we do to, to keep the jail functioning. So that's what this is about. 
Mr. Shakespeare, are you finished? And I apologize. I did not realize it was Ms. on the agenda. Ms. Potnow. Well, I, I, and, and, and this, until this invoice just came out, it, it never mm. triggered anything. Basically, Mr. Valentine, we're still talking about design. It's yes, ma'am. This is what this yes, is about. Th th and this did, did we not discuss, I think, with the sheriff that we would uh, try, try to go with this extra design that it could be, maybe be even built in phases? That's correct. And, and that, that's what we, we approved a design for 100 beds, as Ms. Evans back to show me here. And that's what the design we approved. But what Mr. Ziegler has and the parish has is a bill for 240 beds, which doesn't kind of match up what we've already approved, so we need to make that official. That was my let question. Me say that yes. the, Who the gave right. the task order to do that? that well, that was, that was done because uh, the, the, the architect is Abair? It's Abair. Charles Abair? Uh, Gary Abair, right? Gary Abair. Grayson Abair. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the task was done, and when he started the task on 100 beds, um, it was, it was, and the sheriff is, is also footing some of this situation. The sheriff essentially asked him to do it. Uh, so there's some cost sharing involved in this. Uh, but uh, we had some meetings previous, uh, but we never came back to the, the council to get approval, uh, and we failed to do that. But that's what this is about. Mr. Salvo? Yeah, this, this has been a project that's been work been, we've been working on for quite some time now there's was a couple of things that needed to be taken care of prior to us making a decision on just how far we're going forward like for instance uh, the acquisition of additional property which that has been complete that's it's moving done. along that's finally we got enough property where we can feel comfortable spending a large amount of money for future expansion second thing was decisions needed to be made with the sewer now that has been cleared out of the way. Now it comes time to see just how many beds we're wanting to uh, expand. It was talked about up front, 100,000. After further uh, reviewing the the numbers in the parish, uh, the amount of people that's here already, and anticipating the numbers coming in the next 10, 15 years, we've seen that by the time we finish this thing, that 100 beds could have been very well filled up. Uh, that's where we went into serious discussion on what we can do. So far as the invoice that's here, we talked about some type of sale units where you can just add uh, up to 250, 240, 250. Uh, I would imagine that that is what uh, Grace and Abair has been working on. So it's not like no, 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 wasted money. A, no, it's, it's not like okay. that at all. Uh, but it is time to come together and see how we're going to fund. There has been some numbers crunched as far as bonding. Uh, there was discussion about uh, the, some cost sharing coming from the sheriff's office that would offset what we would have to pay for, for the, the bond. Uh, but it is, it, it is looking like we will have to go out for a bond to handle this project. We know that. We've been knowing it. It's just that we've been waiting for other things to come to completion and now it is time for us to move forward on what we're going to do as far as finances. Well you, that, now you've got a pretty hard number about what it's, what it's going to cost to do it yeah. and uh, and then actually the invoice we have today is fine but the next invoice which is actual design schematics which will take them about six weeks is a hundred is one hundred fifty thousand by itself and that's decisions will be coming very soon on where we're going that way that way there would be no no issue for the next invoice okay very good thank you yes, mr Hill's back just one quick comment uh, mr Sigler, i appreciate you bringing this to our attention as soon as you did and as soon as you uh, got that uh, invoice make us aware of this is the right committee bring those things up thank you any further comments? Any opposition to the motion? Uh, Ms. Suzanne, I object. Number 12, 2005 Roadway Reconstruction Program. Oh, excuse me, we already took care of that. Next, we have 12A funding for Country Ridge. Excuse me, Mr. Carroll. We did. I'm sorry. Excuse that number, number 12. 12. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I thought the chairman only voted to break a tie. I voted cool. Mr. Helms back. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
Number 12, 2005 Roadway Reconstruction Program, Betty Street Improvements. I'm DPW Director, Mr. Turner. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, um, since I'm relatively new, I'm Bob Turner. I'm the Director of Public Works of Ascension Parish. Uh, I'm in my second week, I think. I wanted to bring this issue, and I, I really appreciate you putting it on the agenda of the Finance Committee. Uh, on Tuesday, we had the Transportation Committee, had several items on the Transportation Committee, and, and quite frankly, I failed to add this item to that. I've talked to a, a number of you, and fortunately, Chairman Berger had uh, agreed that it made sense to come to this committee to bring this issue up. Essentially, uh, what we have is construction going on on Betty Street. It's uh, We've encountered some extremely bad soil uh, in one area, made an attempt to uh, correct that. It failed to do so. And uh, when we exposed another area, it was just as wet. We needed to do the same action, re basically reconstruct that portion, resulting in a $60,000 change order to the Betty Street contract. Fortunately, the money is in the program. There's no additional money needed into the program, but it is a change order that will have to be enacted on Betty Street. Be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Chairman, I uh, recommend that we send this to the full council for approval. Motion by Mr. Lambert. Second. Second by Mr. Joseph. Discussion. Mr. Mr. Bob, Mr. Bob, it says uh, that the paperwork will follow as soon as possible. This is the actual change order itself that they're itself, talking about. No, I, just, uh, I just need the no authority. There's no further details or invoices that we need to see before making a decision. No, ma'am. Uh, the, uh, they had determined the area that it would be involved in and uh, pretty well quantified the amount. And so uh, when the change order comes through, uh, it will be measured and it will be within this this Within a, yes, so we will get, when the actual change order comes through, this is just a base amount. That's correct. Yes, Good enough. Thank you. Mr. Salwa. Mr. Bob, I hate to put you on the spot. You being as new as you are, but this, with this change order coming, is that any reflection on Burt Klein Peter or URS or RJ Dago, or is this just some unforeseen situation that came up that was unavoidable? Unfortunately, uh, in, in my opinion, it's unavoidable. And, and unfortunately, whenever you deal with existing pavements to reconstruct them, once you take that old surface off, you're not quite sure what you have under it. And, and in this case, it's extremely wet, and it what's called pumps. So when you go over it, it, moisture just keeps coming up. So the only solution is to excavate that area and put in uh, better material, drier material, and then come back up. So uh, really it's not something that you could foresee on design. That's, no, that, and that's what I want to make sure. There was no way that we could see this prior to digging it up. No, that's correct. Okay. No. That's fine. Mr. Hill is back. Uh, Mr. Turner, on, on Betty Street, is, was that a concrete street or was that a previously asphalted street? It was a concrete street. Okay, so we didn't do soil borings is what you um, did we do soil borings? Hey, you don't normally do soil borings on, on concrete, do you? I think there were soil borings taken. But this, there was no indication of this? Uh, well, again, I, I, I'll go on record of saying, I've said this in the past, I think on those uh, soil borings we take, knowing the history of our roads and Ascension Parish, we need to take additional soil borings so that we know up front exactly what, we, what we're dealing with on that, uh, on that uh, sub-base, substructure. I think that's good advice. Mr. Shake Snyder. Uh, I, I'd like to echo what Mr. Uh, Hillenbeck has said. Uh, we're, we're coming over and over again for these roads and having some substantial change orders, and every one of them comes back to uh, an enlightenment period of, of, of the contractor and the engineer and everyone else as to what's under the, uh, the soil. And, and we're getting soil testing engineers that are going out there and not coming back with what's really happening. And so, uh, you know, I, I think a little more upfront payment to the soil testing to get a more in-depth uh, will give us a, a, a little savings on, on the, the end there so we'll know what's going on. Uh, I, I just see this as, 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 a, as a constant every time. Uh, so 
uh, if you could look into it and give us some recommendations or something we can do that would better uh, help us to, to know what's under there, we'd appreciate it. I will do that, yes, sir. Any further discussion? Y'all want to move on? Any objection? Motion carries. Thank you all. 12A, Country Ridge Funding. Uh, this was asked to uh, put on the finance agenda by Mr. Salvoy. It was approved at the last council meeting pending funding, and now we're having a discussion for the funding of Country Ridge. Yeah, it came out of Utilities Committee? Yes, sir. To uh, fund, well, to go forward with the Country Ridge project at the council meeting, it was approved pending finances. And here we are finances, I need to know from administration, I hear from someone, where, where's the funding, can we, uh, can we fund it, and where's the funding coming from? Has anyone had opportunity to look at this from administration or <coughs> to tell us? From administration, Mr. Sigler is here. He, he has a comment. Based out of this year's budget, uh, we could do that in a two phase deal. Uh, and Bob Turner and I looked at this before the, last, before the uh, finance committee meeting. And our thought was if the money at that time was all available, we'd want to do it all in one whack. But probably from a finance standpoint, the easiest thing to do would be to fix all the I&I &I problems out of this budget year, which will basically replace the pumps, fix all the leaks in the lines, which is most of the problem, and then drill the new wet well once the new budget year kicks off. And so budget for that. The reality is just to get the rest of this work done, we probably wouldn't be able to complete the whole thing this budget year anyway. I, put, I, I move that we uh, move forward with the suggestion of Mr. Sigler and budget it over two years in the phases that he talked about. Motion by Mr. Shakespeare. Second. Second by Mr. Savoy. Discussion, Mr. Joseph. Discussion, Mr. Hillensbeck. Yeah, thank you. What does that cost again to do this? The cost for both was 550000 they're approximately 50-50. Right. Uh, the collections and pumps and then the uh, the uh, wet well, as Mr. Sigler said. Yeah. Now, uh, just to remind y'all, the committee's recommendation was to fix both. This has been an ongoing problem, Country Ridge. Every time it rains, they, they do have backups in people's homes just just the water comes in, and uh, it's been an ongoing situation. Now, Mr. Joseph, you have a yes, comment? Yes, and I just want to uh, verify that. I'm Madonna. sorry. You do still have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I, I guess my question on this is the, the budget impact. Uh, you know, if I ask uh, Ms. LeBlanc on the microphone to talk about it a little bit. Right. I, I think we definitely need to look at the budget impact and, and spreading it out over a couple of years. I mean, it's a substantial cost. You want to comment on it, Gwen? No. <laughs> Not really? If, if you don't have any information, Ms. Gwen, you don't have to. Okay. I can send you emails, you know, and decide what money is coming out of. I'm assuming the water waste water. I don't know if it has $500,000. Sorry, I didn't catch his comment. Wastewater does not have enough money in it available to do the entire project at this point. Of course, you know, it says always the only fund that has any any undedicated revenue is our one cent sales tax. So that's the only way we would be able to fund it. With a transfer to you know water wastewater. Uh, wait, Mr. Sowell, Mr. Hill, thanks to the floor. 
and, and what was Mr. Sigler's comment again? He said that there was there was not any money at this time. No, I don't think there's enough money in the water wastewater fund right now. There's not half a million dollars. Yeah, that idea of splitting it out over this year and next year is that feasible, Glenn? Uh, Ms. Gwynn? I don't think so. You don't, don't think, think we so? Have a, we, I don't think we have enough that you have not dedicated already in the water wastewater fund. You have to match the stag grant, and that's a million right there. Well, I, I'm not against doing that, this project at all. That should be in there already. Uh, you know, I, the council, uh, if you recall, back in June of 06, rededicated the projects in the STAG grant. And so, you know, that's that's set. So that being said, you know, there's not, no. And you also funded uh, the three sewer di uh, systems that we have in the 06 and 07 budget. You know, the, the amount that the user fees, those enterprise zones, the user fees did not pay for their budgets. So in the 07 budget that you adopted, you provided some extra funds for those uh, sewer systems. Yeah, well, again, I'm, I'm not against uh, doing this. I, I agree with Mr. Byerger. This has been a problem for a long time. I, I guess I'm just a little concerned about the, the funding and having the available dollars to do what we need to do to do it right well and not like i said the only undedicated funds you have is is your one cent sales tax and you know if it's funded if you desire to fund it you'd have to authorize a transfer you know from the one cent sales tax to the water wastewater fund and if all you want it you know, not all but if half it represents a quarter of a million you know this year an amendment we do intend to present to you in May at your next finance meeting a budget amendment. As you know, we have several issues. We have to have the jail issue resolved or, you know, at least a game plan on how we'll fund that. And then we also have to make the adjustment for uh, road and bridge maintenance fund. And then there's the uh, adjustments we need to make on our ad valorem taxes once we get we got the uh, new ad valorem tax adjustments from the assessor so there's you know several issues that need to be addressed immediately so this could be one also if you so desire finish mr hill yeah thank you mr chair uh, mr joseph um miss Gwen answered my question i just wanted to verify where the funds was coming from and she just basically said we don't have it that's thank you mr lambert yeah miss Gwen, the stag grant originally did we have funding for country ridge in it i think so i don't have it with Stay. me right now but i mean it was some of those sewer systems i know one was hillaryville to provide for the overrun in hillaryville or darrow so was it redirected I, the funds from i can the answer that country ridge? yes mr lambert it, it was because they had a project that was that was ready before country ridge design and all was ready so we redirected through uh utilities committee on the stag grant because this particular project was not ready. And I think it was either Hillaryville yeah. or, or Dara. Or one Dara. Or the other. Yeah, there was a was ready, so we redirected the money there. So, and yes, it was, was a, but the project was not ready yet. And there was some funding for ACUD in there that you adopted. You recall the other one? There was about three or four <coughs> items. You finished, Ms. Lane? And, and it's not to say there's not funding in the one set, but that is the source of funding you would have to use. Mr. Shakespeare. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I made my motion based on the information uh, Mr. Sigler has given. Obviously, it's, it's changed a little bit. And I think it would be more prudent to uh, direct uh, finance to go back and, and, and sit and discuss with uh, planning and DPW and, and come back and give us uh, a couple of options. Uh, of methods of funding uh, that would be appropriate uh, where we could vote on uh, at the next meeting so that we can go forward uh, with that and, and have that ready and uh, for us to vote on and move forward at that time. The, and so I'd like to offer that. council meeting, I mean next week is what you'd like? Or you yes. Talking? Uh, finance meeting. At the next finance meeting we're going to have to discuss it and decide which, uh, which method we're going to use. You finish, yes. or was that a substitute? That's, that's a, that's, I'm gonna withdraw my original motion and make that as a motion now. I second that. 
Motion by Mr. Shea Snyder. Can you please repeat your motion? Well, I'm, I'm not clear. On direct it. finance to get with uh, DPW and, and, and planning and bring to us some options of funding uh, for this problem, whether it be uh, one year, two year uh, method, and that we can vote on at the next meeting and move forward with this project and have it, have it well financed so that everybody will know. Uh, the way we're moving forward. Along with the budget impacts. Yeah. And we had a second by Mr. Hillensbeck. <coughs> okay. Any further discussion? Ms. <coughs> well, actually, we have Mr. Savoy first. There's a couple of things that we can do here as far as funding. So far as piecemealing this, I don't believe in, I don't like piecemealing, but if that has, if that's the only means of getting a project done, then we'll do that. There are two, there are a couple of avenues that we can look at. One is we're already at the end of the first quarter of the year. Let's go back and look at the budget and see what we budgeted, what items we budgeted, what projects we budgeted that we can pretty much tell today that we're not going to get to. We do it every year. We, 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 every year we budget for project that doesn't get done and we just roll it over to the next year. That's one thing that we can look at. There are some projects out there that we budgeted substantial amounts of money that we will not get to this year nor spend the money. That's one thing and we can move that money. Another one and your uh, monthly sales uh, report right here. Uh, year to date we're $434,000 ahead of budgeted. So there's another area. Now realizing there's some more budget amendments that's coming, but that's another chunk of money right there that we can look at. So that's two avenues that we can go to to try to find the $550,000 to do it as a whole project. That's my, just my thought. Just a quick comment on your comments, Mr. Sala. If you do have some known budgets, please pass that to finance and Mr. Sigler so they can investigate that. Some known items, you items excuse yeah. me, in the budget. Ms. Fautner. Well, I do know that we've been dealing with this project for a long time, and we did take the money that was appropriated to use in another project because they were ready uh. to go. Would it be possible or could we get finance to get us some of these options so that when we meet on the, the uh, Lowe's issue that we can move it along a little quicker to the council? That'll be fine when we mm -hmm. draft our agenda. Sure. We'll add that if we're ready. That's it, Ms. Fontenot. That's it. Any other comments? Any opposition to the motion? Motion carried. 13. Proposed agenda for regular council meeting of April 19, 2007. Please take a few minutes to uh, look over it and then we'll take some comments. I see Mr. Lambert has one already. Yes, sir. Uh, at the last uh, council meeting, we had on the agenda special QCs, and I wasn't ready for that. I've talked to Mr. Babbin, and Mr. Babbin agreed that we needed to come up with a cooperative endeavor agreement. And uh, y'all have one in front of y'all that it was handed out. Any questions, uh, Mr. O'Neill is ready to answer. This is just some, I guess, housekeeping. This has been a program for the last 11 or 12 years that's been outstanding. It's for our handicapped kids and adults in the parish. and. Uh, Ms. Bobby Blanchard has been heading up this project, and we've run into a little couple of legal issues this year that needed to be cleaned up, and Ricky Babbin agreed that with this uh, agreement, we could take care of all the housekeeping we need. And uh, I want to just get this on the next council agenda, and I have it for y'all to all look at within the next week or so. If you got any questions, please get with Mr. Uh, Parrington. So I want to get this item on the agenda, council agenda for next week. And Any I'll other comments, concerns? We can place. need a motion on that. Or? No, I don't believe we need a motion. Okay, just put we'll place. Just it. add it. Ms. Fontenot, you have something? Uh, I do. I want to make sure that you add item D to the transportation committee report, and that's the change order on there. And also, Ms. Suzanne, if you will get with me, I have some additional information on the Red Hat Baby Proclamation. I will wear five. Any, uh, Mr. Valentine, you have something? Yeah, I want to, I just want to inform the, uh, the council um, and also uh, Mr. O'Neill, I, I did talk with Mr. Babbin on this situation. The item number 16 on the general business, the appeal for reinstatement of the two employees. Um, uh, Mr. Babbin, uh, in the past, um, I guess there was some confusion 
the last time we had one of the appeals that came for us as far as whether it could be an executive session or not did not meet the criteria, that particular person didn't meet the criteria. This particular um, um, exec, well, this, uh, this appeal does meet the criteria for executive session. Uh, but it's not our choice. It's actually the, the two people that are making the appeal. It's their choice whether they can have an executive session or not. I do understand that they are represented by counsel. At least that's what I've been told. Uh, hopefully, if they if, and if they are, uh, human resource department, uh, Mr. Pierce. I see you in the audience. I don't know if you're on the payroll yet, but you're fixing to be. Uh, you might want to check with make sure the human resource. Uh, uh, is aware of this, that they need to bring all documentation concerning this case to the meeting, and that they're, that the counsel for these two ladies uh, th that can be done in executive session because it is it does meet the criteria. And I won't say what that criteria is, but it will it does meet it. And, and uh, yes, ma'am. They do have legal counsel and reason that they can offer these agendas the last time because the legal counsel was not able to attend. Correct. Yeah, and, and I knew that, but, but there were some questions from some council members of whether we could go in executive session or not. Uh, and, 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 but I just want to clarify that publicly that that is, that is a, a possibility, but it's their request. They can do that. Um, and, but I want to make sure that the Human Resource Department of Ascension Parish also has all their documentations because this council has no idea. Uh, and that's how the process works. Uh, they make an appeal, and we're the last uh, avenue they have for appeal for their reinstatement of their job. So just want to make that clear to everyone. Any other requests for the agenda? <laughs> I have one, Ms. Suzanne, if you could, under utilities, uh, list Country Ridge funding, just in case we do have a settlement by the council meeting, we can take care of under it. Under utilities, you said? Yes, ma'am, under utilities. Uh, put, put the Country Ridge uh, funding on there just in case we have a resolution okay. we can take care of that since it's been pending anything else uh, number 14 mr. McConnell I move to adjourn second